Hi everyone, so today I want to take a minute and talk to you about something that's quite important and that is making options that are in your rat's best interest rather than what is for you, what you want basically. So I've got a couple of examples that I'm going to talk about. So the first one I want to bring up is Theo. So Theo was a buck that I had um, and over time as obviously rats age and pass away, he was eventually left on his own. Now, this coincided with me being due to give birth and obviously the kind of stress and everything of that coming up. And Theo was quite a grumpy old man. Like, he never did a lot of damage in any of the intros that I tried, but he was a very grumpy old man and definitely needed very slow, very careful introductions and he really needed babysitted, so to speak, you know, to keep an eye on him and to keep an eye on things in the group. And, you know, I found myself, by the time I came home with my daughter and everything like that, obviously, whole world's changing, you're coming home with a baby. The rats got a bit put on the back burner because I had something, you know, bigger in my life to take care of. So, Theo was alone for a few weeks and I knew in my heart that at that time in my life, I was not in a position to take my time and sit and baby these intros. Um, you know, as I said, I brought home a baby and, you know, I was just like, that was my whole world at that point. That was the whole, you know, I had that to freak out over. I didn't have the time or the energy to try and focus on babying Theo and giving him what he needed. But at the same time, I'm well aware that what he needed was other rats. Um, even if I hadn't, you know, even if I'd said, oh, I'll spend as much time as possible with him, you know, it doesn't matter. That was not going to replace another rat for him. Like he needed another rat or a group of rats in his life. So I chose to do what was in his best interest and that was giving him to a friend who had a group of males and she was willing and able and had the time to be able to spend with him and do the introductions. And I'm very pleased to say that the introductions did work and I say Theo was an old boy and you didn't have too long left but he managed to have a good few weeks of company and eventually actually just passed away um, with the group that he was introduced to so although that was a hard choice for me I had to put my feelings aside at that point like it didn't matter that I was sad to let him go um he needed rat friends so I did what was best for him and that was choosing to rehome him to somebody that I knew now I'd like to talk about another kind of situation and that'll be bagel so I know that there'll be people here who follow me only because they found me through emiology um so they'll know, pretty much they kind of know the whole story about what's been going on with Bagel. But a quick rundown is, he is bred by me. Um, him and his brother went to Emmy, and unfortunately he started showing human aggression. So he has bitten, um, and he was subsequently neutered for that reason. Normally once you get neutered you tend to find the calm down. Um, I will say that he is actually the first instance of a rat that has not particularly calmed down after being neutered. Um, so once he was neutered, he, you know, Emmy tried reintroductions and everything. As I say, there's a way longer version of the story on her channel. Um, the short, the short story is it didn't work. Um, he, although he wasn't physically causing great deals of damage to the group of rats that he was with, he was antagonising them. He was picking on them, and he was just overall generally making their lives miserable. So. What was really hard, but the best thing to do, was return Bagel to me. And the reason that I've taken Bagel back is because I've got more groups of rats, I also have female rats, and basically I've got more options with which to try and introduce him to a group. Now my for first port of call when I have a neutered male is I tend to try and put them with females because I find that you know if they've been having issues with the male group, once they get neutered they tend to go really really well with females. Um, so I did take Bagel back, he's been here now since Monday, this is, what day of the week, oh, this is Thursday that I'm filming this, <laughs> I'm so lost of the days of the week, this is Thursday, so he's been with me for four days now. So the first thing I did when I brought him on Monday was I had planned to put him to these group of females, which is five adult does, and I popped them together in the carrier. Now Bagel is a big lad, and what I saw is, although they had little scuffles, you know, no blood was drawn, it wasn't bad, it was just generally little scuffles. 
The girls were generally intimidated and terrified by Bagel's size. Um, now I've seen this happen before with Bran, who was to date like the largest buck I've ever owned. And when he was neutered and I tried to put him to females, his size was so intimidating that the females just weren't willing to accept on you. They were too scared of him. So I cancelled those plans that did not work for Bagel. So what I tried instead was I had one older lone buck who was going in intros with another group which wasn't working so well. So I took Horatio out um, and Horatio had been on his own for a couple of days while I was kind of weighing up my options about what to do next. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try him with Bagel. One on one. Horatio's an old man in that he will not overly stand up and challenge Bagel but he also won't take his crap if he pushes it too far and I think that's basically what Bagel needs is someone who can stand up to him without being intimidated by him but also not push Bagel too far that causes Bagel to react. So I know that that sounds like a very specific type of rat that is needed and there is like a handful of situations where I've found that you need a very very specific rat or group of rats to make one happy. Um, so basically what we needed to do with Bagel in his situation was give him the chance to fit in with a different group which as a breeder and having multiple groups I have that option. Amy sadly didn't have that option and, and he just didn't fit with the rats that she had and you know that's perfectly fine so she's made the big sacrifice of giving him up and it's not it was not an easy decision. It wasn't just a spur of the moment and it was actually me that suggested that he come back you know it was me that brought the idea up. Um, and sometimes rats can just be little buggers like that. <laughs> like they just, you just need to find the perfect group that works for them. I've had it in the past before with you know some rats that they just really need a really submissive you know cage mate to go with, and that just what works for them. So basically, the point of this video is to make you aware that there is, is going to be situations sometimes that pop up in rat care where you need to make the decision that is best for your rat. So in terms of Theo. I put my feelings aside for wanting to keep him as my pet and I gave him to a friend so that he could have a better life. In Amy's case with Bagel, she's chosen to give him a chance at a, you know, a, a, living a life with rats by giving him to me in the hope that I can get him into a group. And I mean, as of today, touch wood, he's in a slightly bigger cage, um, kind of like a, an Alaska size. It's a, I believe it's a Savic Ruffy, you know, a bigger size cage. But they're getting on good. I'm taking it nice and slow with them because I know that he's just a bit temperamental still. And at the end of the day, you know, I don't need Bagel to love me and want love and contact and cuddles with me. I don't need that. What I need is for him to be happy with another rat or a group of rats. Maybe in the future I'll get him into a group. You know, he just needs to live his life out with rats and have minimal contact with me. Obviously I'll take care of him. If he needs vet care, I'll take care of him. But I'm going to be pretty hands off and that's perfectly fine to get some rats that are like that. So I just want to do this video to make you aware and kind of put that perspective to you that there is some cases in life where you are going to have to choose to do what is hard for you but is ultimately best for your rats. So thank you for listening to my rambles. I will try and not leave too long before I do another video again. Um, I really do want to get back into doing videos but with a baby it's very hard to find the time. So anyway, thanks for listening and I will see you in whatever next video is.